Hi and welcome. We have a lot to cover today. We'll talk about architecture for world models. We'll see how to encode uncertainty into it and how to deal with partial observer environments. All essential things for learning real environment. And if you don't care about reinforcement learning, you will nonetheless find very useful information as the topics covered here are the same to many other deep learning branches like video prediction, sequential modeling and many others. Okay, let's dive in. In model-based reinforcement learning, there are three main components. An environment, an agent that learns a policy to accomplish a task, and a word model that simulates the environment and is used by the agent for planning. And because the agent heavily relies on the word model to learn a solid policy, the word model should be a very accurate and precise model of the true environment. And the first pillar for building a learning a great word model is to design an architecture that is able to fit perfectly the environment. Now you may think to use just an autoencoder. And for simple environment like Atari, it will work just fine. But on much more complex environments like GTA or the physical world, for example, we require different and more sophisticated architectures. In particular, there are two major problems that make the simple autoencoder useless. The first is partial observability and the second one is stochasticity. And in this video, we'll see the architectures that address these two problems and that will allow us to design and build a good world model for arbitrarily complex environments. You ready? Let's go! The main categories for world model architectures are just two. Autoregressive models and state-based models. Autoregressive models are well known and they are a great tool for addressing partial observable environment. State-based models, on the other hand, are less known but nonetheless, there are extremely important sequential architectures that model uncertainty. But don't despair, I will explain everything later. Autoregressive models comprehend vanilla and a recurrent version of it. And the space model can be deterministic, stochastic or variational. But first of all, what's a word model? Well, it is a predictive model of the environment that can be used by the agent for planning. So a word model is just something that predicts future states. So for example, a word model can be a neural network that predicts the next state and possibly the reward from the current state and action. For example, given this image and the action up, the word model will predict the reward that is, for example, zero and the next observation. And as you can see, the word model and the environment have the same function that is predict the next state and the reward. But the word model can be queried by the agent to simulate any trajectory starting from any state and at every time. On the other hand, the agent doesn't have control over the real environment it can only be part of it. The agent cannot time travel to the past or into the future to see how the environment will behave in particular contexts. Okay, so in a simple environment where at every time step the agent have an overview on the complete state of the environment, you could just use a simple autoencoder that takes the current state and action and predict the next state. An example of this is chess where the player have access to the full state of the chessboard. But fully observable environments are extremely rare. Only few simple environments have this design. The majority of the environments are partial observable, where partial observable environments means that the agent at every time has just a partial view over the state of the environment. For example, you have only a partial view over the world that is given by your senses. And partial observability will bring us to the first architectural change. Let me show you a sequence of observations. Which one do you think should be used to predict this next frame? 
Is the last observation enough? Well, no, because the enemy and other objects that are needed for predicting correctly the next one are hidden. But using information from the last four steps, for example, you can give a high confidence prediction. And what I wanted to show you here is that the model needs to retrieve information from past observation in order to predict the future. And so you can see that for learning our model of a partial observable environment, we are transitioning to sequential generative models that are also conditioned on the actions. And the first architecture to tackle this problem are autoregressive models that decompose the generative problem as a conditional probability over the observation given all the past observations and current action. So, for example, you could use an autoencoder model where as input you fed all the observation and current action and obtain the next observation. Then, for predicting the next one, you fed the autoencoder with the same input plus the predicted observation and the previous step, and so on and so forth. And this is the autoregressive property. But you can see that it is extremely inefficient and not scalable. At every time step, you need to inject the encoder with the whole previous sequence. So a solution is to use a recurrent mechanism for computational sharing, like a recurrent neural network. This is much better and faster, so that for predicting the next observation, you feed the recurrent neural network with just the current observation in action and the recurrent state. This is actually a good idea, because the neural network also learn in the gated activations a belief state. It is a compact latent space that represents the state of the environment based on what the world model has seen up to this point. This is very useful because it allows not only to predict the next observation, but it also should be su sufficient for learning a policy on top of it, that is doing reinforcement learning. And you can see that when rolling out the sequence, the computation is much faster without the need to encode all the history at every time. Well, that's all? Nope. What happened with high dimensional inputs? The overall architecture is this low. We need to encode and decode the observation also when we are simulating the future. But we have a greater problem. Let's think about real environments. They have another important characteristic. They are stochastic. And this will bring us to the second and last factor that plays a huge role in the design choice of our world model, dealing with stochastic environments. There are two major sources of stochasticity. One is from real stochastic processes, and one comes from partial observable phenomena. For example, from this clip along, I couldn't predict with certainty when the next car comes into the intersection and that's only due to the partial view of this camera. Ok, ok, environments are stochastic, but can we use the recurrent neural network architecture seen before? Well, to answer this question, let's see how a deterministic model behaves in an environment where a ball can roll to the right with a random angle. The recurrent neural network tries to predict multiple positions at the same time, and the prediction gets more blurry. This is because, given a stochastic environment, any deterministic world model is obliged to predict a statistic of all possible outcomes. And these are all unwanted behaviors. We want just one future, and predict it with a high confidence, no blurry prediction. And instead, how does a stochastic model behave? Well, much better. Ok, but now you can argue that despite the recurrent state is deterministic, in the output space we have a source of variability, because we are predicting a distribution over pixels. 
and yes you're right but it's not sufficient as it is very limited and does not provide uncertainty over time in a latent space where we can model more complex relationships between underlying factors of variation for example in the case of language modeling that's enough but not here where the uncertainty has to be modeled into a higher level of abstraction projecting this variational factor into a higher level of reasoning means for example that the word model abstract the concept that a car at that crossroad can go either to the left or to the right and project just one future among the two possible outcomes one where the car goes to the right and one where it goes to the left and this single high level factor have a lot of dependencies in the output space okay so how to model this complex stochastic phenomenon the answer is state space models now i don't want to dwell too much on state space models and if you are interested in them let me know in the comments below and by the way if you're enjoying the episode leave a like and subscribe so state space model can be seen as a probabilistic extension of recurrent neural networks and they predict a distribution over latent spaces from which they can predict just one over multiple possible future by sampling from this distribution this is what we were talking about before where uncertainty is propagated into a higher level of abstraction so that more complex stochastic interactions can be modeled and the biggest difference with recurrent neural network is that a recurrent neural network learns a deterministic state ht while a stochastic space space model treats the latent space zt as a random variable but let's see more concretely how they operate and first review the mechanism of a deterministic recurrent neural network the recurrent neural network learns a latent representation ht based on a deterministic function given the current observation and the current state and from this deterministic latent representation the next observation is reconstructed instead a state space model follow the same principle as the variational autoencoder but conditioned also on the previous latent space in fact you can see state space model as sequential variational autoencoder so a state space model outputs a distribution of latent representations called posterior distribution and from this distribution a latent representation is sampled from which the next observation is generated and if you want you can think of the latent distribution as a distribution from which the word model represents all possible futures for example the car could go to the left or to the right and the process of sampling can be seen as the process that effectively choose which future will be predicted for example the car go to the left okay so why not using just the space models they are a sequential process and they can emulate recurrent neural network right well there are two major problems the first is that it's very difficult to train due to the stochastic component in the time dimension and the second is that as a consequence of the first it loses information over time okay okay but we know that recurrent neural network are exceptional for representing long-term information and dependencies but lack uncertainty and we also know that the space model are exceptional for dealing with uncertain predictions but lose information over time so the solution use both recurrent stochastic state space model now i want to clarify that there are many different types of architecture that combines the space model with recurrent neural network but now i will explain one particular architecture from the paper dream to control learning behaviors by latent imagination but nonetheless the idea and execution are very similar the inner workings of the recurrent state space model is the following from the recurrent state ht 
two distribution over stochastic states are computed. The first is the posterior state ZT that incorporates information about the current image. And the second is the prior state ZT prime that aims to predict the posterior without having access to the current image. Then the compact belief state is the concatenation of the deterministic and stochastic states. And this distinction between the prior and the posterior, where the prior is trained to match the posterior, is essential during test time. That's because it is predicted just from the recurrent state. Thus, the state space model can operate entirely in a compact space without ever using the encoder decoder, if not just for the first and last step. And from this, you can see that state space models are not autoregressive models, and multiple benefits come from this fact. For example, state space models are much faster and much more stable than recurrent autoregressive models. Now that you know the components, let's see how it is trained. The objective is always to maximize the sequence of the predicted observations, and this can be translated into the maximization of the integral of joint probabilities. Now we could solve using the bias theorem, but it involves intractable computations. So we can use the well-known variational methods that learns an approximate posterior with the encoder and use the elbow that is very similar to the one used for variational autoencoder but adapted for a temporal prior and conditioned also on the actions. The elbow involves three terms, one called image log loss that aims to reconstruct the observation as better as possible and the second and third terms form the KL regulator that push the temporal prior to match the posterior while learning the dependencies over time with the recurrent state. And because we are learning our model, we may also want to predict the reward and discount factor from this compact latent space. And note that during test time, only the transition predictor is used to produce a distribution over possible future states and is based only on the recurrent state, so that at every step, only one possible future is chosen by sampling from this distribution. And you can even use the learned belief state for doing reinforcement learning on top of it. So we have seen that state-based models are great architectures because they operate at a higher level of abstractions, they explicitly model uncertainty in the state transition, and they offer a great speed up over autoregressive and recurrent autoregressive models. Now, in conclusion, there are just a few things that I want to point out. The first is that these architectures need to be explicitly tempted to learn an accurate prior. That's because sequences are almost deterministic over a single time step, but over long time there are many variations. And so the architecture is encouraged to learn a better posterior over the temporal prior. So the solutions are diverse from skip connection to KL balancing techniques. So if you want to learn more about them, you can check uh, the paper I put below or I can make a video about them. The other important choice when using stochastic architectures is to carefully choose an accurate prior. Two common choices are Gaussian distribution or categorical distributions. Great, that's everything for today. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. See you on the next one. Bye.